In the last video, we discussed series solutions and how we can use power series to solve differential equations. In this video, we're going to extend the concept of series solutions and apply it to one of the most important problems in math and physics, and that's the Legendre ODE problem. Legendre's equation is just a linear differential equation given by 1 minus x squared times d2y dx squared minus 2x dy dx plus k times k plus 1 times y equals 0. Now keep in mind that k is just a parameter that varies with the exact type of ODE that's being solved. It doesn't have to be an integer, but typically in most physical problems, k is an integer, and in this video you'll see later on that we'll deal with a special case where k is an integer in more depth. So to solve this ODE by the series solution method about the point x0 equals 0, we first need to convert it to the form d2y by dx squared plus p of x dy dx plus q of x y equals r of x. And then we need to check whether p, q, and r are all defined at x0, since that's a required condition that ought to be satisfied for the series solution method to be used. So let's do that. If we divide everything in the Legendre ODE by 1 minus x squared, we'll have d2y by dx squared minus 2x over 1 minus x squared dy by dx plus k times k plus 1 over 1 minus x squared y equals 0. Now let's check whether p, q, and r are all defined at x equals 0. It turns out that they are. R is just 0, it's a constant, so it's going to be defined for all x. P and Q are only undefined at x equals negative 1 and x equals plus 1, but at x not equals 0, they're both okay. So that means it's possible to have a regular series solution about x equals 0. Since we're using the regular series solution method, that means our solution y of x is given by the following infinite series. y of x is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n. Our task when finding a series solution to the Legendre ODE is to substitute y of x and its derivatives into the ODE and find formulas for the coefficients a n. So let's take the first and second derivatives of y. To get the first derivative, you just bring the n down and reduce the power by 1 to get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times n times x to the n minus 1. And for the second derivative, you just bring the n minus 1 down and reduce the power by 1 again. Substituting this into the ODE gives us 1 minus x squared times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times n times n minus 1 times x to the n minus 2 minus 2x times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n times a n times x to the n minus 1 plus k times k plus 1 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n, and all of that equals 0. We can simplify this expression. All we have to do is expand everything out, so the 1 minus x squared and the 2x bit. Now, there's still a problem here because the powers on x in each sum aren't consistent. So we're going to have to change that in order to be able to simplify our ODE and get a more manageable expression. There are three series with an exponent of n, and there's only one series where x is raised to the power of n minus 2. So the simpler route is to just change this n minus 2 to an n. How we do that is if you remember from last time, we create a dummy index n, and that's equal to n minus 2. That means that n equals 0, n is equal to negative 2. And so we can replace the n by an n plus 2 and the n minus 1 by an n plus 1, in which case our summation would become the sum from m equals negative 2 to infinity of a sub n plus 2 times n plus 2 times n plus 1 times x to the n. But notice what happens when m equals negative 2. The whole thing becomes 0 because of the n plus 2 term. The same thing happens for m equals negative 1 because of the n plus 1 term. So we can safely start our series at n equals 0 without really losing anything. Now plugging this back into the ODE gives us the following. The sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n plus 2 times n plus 2 times n plus 1 times x to the n minus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times n times n minus 1 times x to the n minus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 times a n times n times x to the n plus k times k plus 1 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n, and all of that equals 0. Notice that we've changed the name of the index from m to n to make things simpler. Now look, every series has the same power of x, and every series starts at n equals 0, so we can put everything together to get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n plus 2 times n plus 2 times n plus 1 minus a n times n times n minus 1 minus 2 a n times n plus k times k plus 1 times a n times x to the n, all of that equals 0. Since this whole series equals 0, it means that all the coefficients in this series are 0, because x isn't necessarily 0, it can be any number x within the domain of the problem that's defined. And this fact allows us to form our recursion relation. 
we can shift all the a sub n terms to the right-hand side and then divide by n plus 2 times n plus 1 to get a sub n plus 2 equals a n times n times n minus 1 plus 2 n minus k times k plus 1. All of that divided by n plus 2 times n plus 1. We can expand out the numerator to get n squared minus n plus 2 n minus k squared minus k. But this part, the negative n plus 2 n bit, just becomes positive n. Since n squared minus k squared can also be written as n minus k times n plus k, we have a sub n plus 2 equals a n times n minus k times n plus k plus n minus k over n plus 2 times n plus 1, which simplifies to a n times n minus k times n plus k plus 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1. So now we finally have a simplified recursion relation. In this relationship, we can see that each term in the sequence is related to the coefficient two terms behind it. So just like last time, just like in the example we did in the previous video, there's one solution for the sequence of even index coefficients and another solution for the sequence of odd index coefficients. For even index coefficients, we start at a0, which is just an arbitrary constant that depends on whatever initial or boundary conditions we have, and then we go from there. That means that a2, which occurs when n equals 0 in this recursion relation, is a0 times negative k times k plus 1 over 2 times 1, which means that a4 is a2 times 2 minus k times 3 plus k over 4 times 3, which becomes k minus 2 times k times k plus 1 times k plus 3 times a0 over 4 factorial. We can go on for a6, a8, and etc. I think you see the pattern already developing. For the odd index coefficients, we start at a1, which is also an arbitrary constant that depends on our initial and boundary conditions. With a1, we can easily find a3 from the recursion relation, which is just a1 times 1 minus k times 2 plus k over 3 times 2. And so we can go on to find a5, and that's just a3 times 3 minus k times 4 plus k over 5 times 4. And in terms of a1, that's a1 times k minus 3 times k minus 1 times k plus 2 times k plus 4 over 5 factorial. And we can keep going for a7, a9, you get the idea. Now, in many Legendre ODE problems, the constant k is usually a positive integer. So what happens if k equals 1? Well, if k equals 1, our odd series of coefficients terminates and immediately becomes 0 as soon as we reach a3 because of this 1 minus k factor that's in the expression for a3, which becomes 0 when k equals 1. Because the subsequent coefficients, a5, a7, and so on, all depend on previous coefficients like a3, it follows that those coefficients that come later on in the series are also 0 because a3 is 0, and that's why the series terminates. So the solution corresponding to the odd series of coefficients when k equals 1 is y odd is just a1 times x, which I can write as a1 times p1 of x. p1 is just a function of x. You'll see why I call the p1 later on. The even series, on the other hand, doesn't terminate because there's no root k equals 1 in the numerator, no matter how far we go. n can only take on even values, so this n minus k basically never becomes 0. However, here's what happens when k equals 2 a2 becomes negative 2 times 3 over 2, which is just negative 3a0, and a4 becomes 0 because of the k minus 2 term. So the solution corresponding to k equals 2 for even numbered coefficients is y even is a0 minus 3a0 x squared, which is just a0 times 1 minus 3x squared. And this becomes 1 half of 3x squared minus 1 when a0 is negative 1 over 2. Essentially, I can pick whatever a0 I want. It's just an arbitrary constant that depends on the initial or boundary conditions. As long as I put that arbitrary constant back when I write my general solution, it doesn't matter what a0 I pick right now. By the way, I'm going to label this 1 half of 3x squared minus 1 as p2 of x. Now, for k equals 2, the odd number coefficients don't terminate, because there's no k minus 2 or 2 minus k that will occur anywhere along the series. So that series keeps on going. However, for k equals 3, we can show that 1 minus 3 is negative 2 times 5 over 6 is just negative 5 over 3 a1x cubed plus a1x, which becomes 1 half of 5x cubed minus 3x when I set my a1 to be negative 3 over 2. And I'm going to label this as p3 of x. Again, the even series for this odd value of k doesn't terminate. We can repeat this process for k equals 4, k equals 5, k equals 6, and so on, and we'll find that every time, for even k's, we'll get an even series to terminate, and for an odd k, we'll get an odd series to terminate. Furthermore, whenever the series terminates, we end up with a polynomial, 
whose highest power is the power of k that's chosen. So for example, when we had k equals 3, our highest power was an x cubed term. And when k equals 2, our highest power was an x squared term. In fact, these polynomials, you know, the p1, p2, and p3 I labeled, that result from the series terminating early aren't just any polynomials. They're special polynomials, just like how you're not just any person, you're a special person. And yes, I did say that so you would subscribe and contribute to the boatloads of money I'm making from ad revenue. Anyway, these polynomials are called Legendre polynomials because they're polynomials that are solutions to the Legendre ODE. They come up quite a bit in electromagnetism and quantum mechanics, among other things, so they're pretty important. Because they're so important, a bunch of techniques have already been developed to calculate Legendre polynomials more easily. One of these techniques is Rodriguez's formula, given right here. It's possible to derive this formula from the recursion relation we had earlier, but I'll leave that to another video if people really want to see me do it. So that does it for Legendre polynomials and the regular series solution method. In the next video, we're going to go over Frobenius's method, which is a nice segue into the next really important ODE called Bessel's equation.